Warning, Superpower Review is intended for a mature viewing audience. This video may show images that are not suitable for kids under 13 years old. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Kevin Vidini here for Super Power Review and I wanna thank you guys so much for clicking play on this video and showing your support to the channel. On today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my top 50 comic books in my comic book collection. Now this is going to include my favorite comic book covers, my favorite stories, and you know, just some of my personal favorites in the collection. So normally when people show off their top 50 comic books in their comic book collection, they start at 50, work their way down, and start showing you the good stuff toward the end. Well I'm not going to do that, because ranking all these books is just going to take way too much time and it's hard to decide to pick why this one should be ranked over this one. Just gonna take way too much time and just gonna be way too confusing. So in today's video I'm just gonna show you them at random. We're gonna start with my top favorites and then we're just gonna work into some randomness. So let's start with book number one. Alright, this book has been getting featured a lot on the channel lately. Uh, this is my number one book in my entire comic book collection. This is my favorite. And as you guys know, I absolutely love this book. This is an amazing Spider-Man number 300, which is the first full appearance of Venom. One of my favorite characters. It's done by my favorite artist, which is Todd McFarlane. It's also done by my favorite writer, which is David Michelini. Those two together are just awesome. And uh, this book is triple signed by Todd McFarlane, Stan Lee, David Michelini, and it's also quoted, We Are Venom. I'm sorry for the glare, but you can see that there. And you can see David Michelini's signature there. There's Todd McFarlane, sorry for the glare. And a beautiful Stan Lee signature in gold, nice and big. Uh, this is CGC graded at a 9.4 with beautiful white pages. All right, next up we have a Secret Wars number eight, which is the origin story of how Spider-Man got the symbiote suit. One of my favorite books, just like The Amazing Spider-Man number 300, because you all know that I love anything that's symbiote related. And uh, this is a classic Mike Zek cover, who I absolutely love, and John Beatty helped with this, with this book, and this is written by Jim Shooter. And as you can see here, this is remarked by Mike Zek. It's got a really, really cool Venom signature, uh, I'm sorry, Venom remark right here, which I think is very personal to me. It's very awesome. And it's signed by Mike Zek in silver on the logo too, which is pretty cool. You just, normally he signs in black over here, but I really like the silver right next to his remark. All right, coming in at number three, we have my Incredible Hulk number 181, another book that's been that's being featured a lot on the channel recently. Uh, this is the first full appearance of Wolverine, who is my favorite X-Men, my favorite mutant, and just one of my top five favorite Marvel characters. This is graded at a 6.0. This is a qualified label due to the fact that the Marvel's value stamp is missing, which I don't care. <laughs> don't care about a stamp. Uh, this was the only way I could uh, was able to purchase this book if that Marvel stamp was missing. And this book presents really nice to say it's a 6.0. The colors are super bright on it. It's got a really nice cover to it. Just a really nice book and I'm very, very happy to own this book in the collection. All right, at number four we have my Batman 227. This is a beautiful, beautiful Neil Adams cover. One of my favorite Neil Adams covers. And um, it's just dark, creepy, I really like it. And this one is very special to me. As you can see, it is remarked by Neil Adams. You can see a really cool Batman sketch on there. And it's signed by him as well in silver, which looks really great against the black. And again, one of my favorite covers. Not in the best shape, but the remark really makes up for condition in this book. You know, it's just absolutely gorgeous. All right, now we have a Spider-Man number one, which is one of my favorite Todd McFarlane covers of all time. And I think uh, that goes along with everybody else too who is into comic book collecting or who is a Todd McFarlane fan. This book is also very special to me because this was my first and last raffle win. So this one came signed 
by Stan Lee, beautiful silver Stan Lee signature, and this is also signed by Todd McFarlane, which was my first for me. So this was both signed by Todd McFarlane and Stan Lee, my first Todd McFarlane Stan Lee signatures. And uh, I really love the silver cover on this book. This is my favorite out of the whole bunch. You know, when it comes to the regular one and the gold one, silver is my favorite. It looks really good against the black background, and I absolutely love this book. Here's an amazing Spider-Man number 50. Uh, this is a classic cover as well. This is the first appearance of Kingpin. This book is also special to my collection because my one of my friends gave me this book. Uh, he had a huge comic book collection. He decided one day to sell all of his comic books, made a huge profit on them, and he knew that I was a comic book collector, he knew I was a Spider-Man fan, and ended up giving me this book, which I'm very thankful for to this day. All right, now that I got my top favorite books out of the way, we're gonna get really random in this video now. We're gonna go from slab books to raw books, from Marvel to DC. So up next, we have an amazing Spider-Man number 238, which is the first appearance of the Hobgoblin. And yes, this book has its tattoos. All right, right now we have a Batman number 189, which is the first Silver Age appearance of Scarecrow. This is also a really cool cover and a great first appearance to have. Uh, Scarecrow is one of my top favorite Batman villains, but if I'm gonna be honest, not the greatest read. I'm always skeptic about buying Silver Age books because uh, they can get a little campy. I like my comic books a little more serious, but fantastic cover, really cool appearance. Read-wise, meh. All right, up next we have a Venom number two from Lethal Protector, which is my favorite cover out of the run. Classic art by Mark Bagley, written by David Michelini. This book is very special to me, not only because it's my favorite Venom cover or Mark Bagley cover, but this book is signed by Mark Bagley, as you can see right there. Sorry for the glare yet again. But it is also written out to me, it says, To Kevin Bagley, which is a really, really cool book to have in the collection. All right, up next, I'm going to be showing off my Teen Titans number 12, which is the very first appearance of one of my new favorite villains, which is the Batman Who Laughs. All right, up now, we have an Incredible Hulk number 340, which is, you know, one of my favorite Todd McFarlane covers. I'm going to be saying a lot during this video, you know, because a lot of Todd McFarlane's work is, is my favorite. Uh, this book is CGC graded at a 9.2 with white pages and it is signed by Todd McFarlane up in blue there, as you can see, really cool signature. And uh, I absolutely love this book. This is one of my favorite books, not only because of cover, but because of story as well. This book is super epic. There is lots of violence in this book. You know, we have the Incredible Hulk and we have Wolverine duking it out and they haven't, you know, seen each other since Hulk 181. So they definitely have a rivalry going on. They're like water and oil. You know, they just don't mix. There's a lot of blood in this in this book there's a lot of anger and violence and that's why i just love this book so so much all right up next we have a swamp thing number seven which is a awesome cover done by bernie Wrightson. this is the first time swamp thing and batman ever meet swamp thing and batman get into a little bit of a duel in here batman has the upper hand at first but it only takes one punch for swamp thing to knock out batman all right, I think it's time in this video we show off some independence. As you can see here, I have a Spawn number one in my hands. Definitely love me some Spawn, you know, not only because he's a cool character, also because, you know, it's one of my favorite artist's creations. And as you all know, I love some blood and violence in my comic books. All right, let's start showing off some love to Gabriel Delato, who is another one of my favorite artists. This is an amazing Spider-Man annual number one. And as you can see here, this is a fantastic cover. We have a symbiote Spider-Man trying to rip off his costume. Uh, this probably takes place during Web of Spider-Man number one where the bell tower is ringing in the background and Spider-Man's desperately trying to take off his suit. And then it is later explained in Amazing Spider-Man number 300 how Eddie Brock ended up obtaining the symbiote suit, becoming Venom. All right, no surprise here, I'm showing off another Todd McFarlane cover and another book signed by Todd McFarlane. This is a Batman 423. I recently just got this book back from CGC. It's signed by Todd McFarlane in silver right here. Beautiful signature. I was really lucky, I ended up getting the full signature and not T. McFarlane. This book is graded at a 9.6, and this is the first and only 
Batman cover that Todd McFarlane has done for the Batman run. Alright, let's show off another one of my favorite X-Men. This is the Uncanny X-Men number 266, which is the first appearance of Gambit. Alright, here's another great first appearance. This is Vengeance of Bane number one. And of course, this is the first appearance. You named it. Bane. Bane is also one of my favorite Batman villains of all time. He's definitely in the top five. If you have not picked up this book or read this book, I definitely highly recommend that you do. Uh, this is a fantastic read. I really loved this book a lot. This is a great origin story to one of my favorite villains. And it's not that expensive of a key to pick up, to be honest. You know, to say that is a first appearance of a very well-known and loved Batman villain, this book is not that expensive. Alright, showing off some more symbiote sexiness, we have a Venom number 9. This is not only a fantastic cover, but this is a great read as well. Again, I've said it many times in this video, I love my comic books with lots of action, and of course, with lots of violence. And this book provides all of that. We have Venom in this book, but in people's heads off, killing people, which is all things I really like. Alright, going back to DC, as you guys all know, this is my favorite Batman cover of all times, so my favorite Neil Adams cover. This is a Batman number 251, which is a awesome Joker cover. This is an amazing Spider-Man number one. This is a Clayton Crane variant. I've got to meet Clayton Crane a lot at Comic Cons. He's a fantastic artist. When I went to go see him once for a con, I ended up buying this book. I was just gonna have him sign it, but uh, he was doing remarks that day and I had him do a really cool Venom remark on this book. As you can see here, it came out great. At first I was debating about not doing it, but my friend convinced me to do it and I'm very very thankful that my friend pushed me to do it because I definitely would have regretted it. Uh, this is a fantastic book and one of my favorite books in my collection. Alright, now I'm going to be showing off one of my favorite kaiju of all time, my favorite monster, which is Godzilla. This book is signed by the cover artist, which is Bob Eglinton, who I got to meet at a comic shop. Bob Eglinton is local to me, he lives in Massachusetts. And uh, this is just one of my favorite covers from this Dark Horse run. I absolutely love this book. Up next we have a Batman Who Laughs number 3. Uh, this is one of my favorite variant covers from the Batman Who Laughs limited series. The cover artist always escapes me. I, I can never remember his name, but uh, the day I find out <laughs> and remember, I would definitely would love to have this artist sign this book, get this book engraved. Alright, up next I have a Secret Wars number one, which was a huge story back in the 80s. This is a classic cover done by Michael Zeck, who I have signed here, and John Beatty, who was signed on uh, Captain America's shield, which is pretty cool because uh, Captain America is one of his favorite heroes. And we also have it signed by the writer Jim Shooter. Alright, here's another fantastic Spawn cover done by Todd McFarlane. I really love how Spawn is posed on top of the tombstone. And this is also the first appearance of Spawn's arch nemesis, the Violator. Alright, up next we have a Detective Comics number 404, which is just a absolutely epic cover in my opinion. This cover is done by Neil Adams. And as you can see here, we have Batman jumping off of a biplane to land on another person's biplane while being shot at. Alright, I'm going to show some more love to one of my favorite artists and one of my favorite covers done by this artist. This is a Wolverine number 17 and this cover is done by John Byrne. If I were to ever meet John Byrne in person, this is a book that I would definitely have him sign and I would definitely get this book slabbed as well. Alright, yet again, so I'm jumping all over the place, okay, this is not ranked, I'm just you know, showing you guys books at random because again, this is going to be too difficult. This should have been higher. I should have showed this book sooner. But this is a Batman number 232, which is the first appearance of Raja Ghoul. This is a Neil Adams cover, of course, who is one of my favorite Batman artists of all time. I really got to pick up this book really, really cheap at a con one time. I picked up this book for like 80 bucks, which is really cheap for this book. It does have a water stain down in the corner here, but you know, for 80 bucks, I couldn't pass it up. Alright, this is a very, very unique book in my comic book collection. This is a Edge of Venomverse number one. This is a sketch cover or blank cover. I think they're all the same thing. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section. 
This is sketched by Will Torres. This is not an original Todd McFarlane piece that would have just been way too much money. But if you don't want to spend too much money and if you want to have something that looks a lot like Todd McFarlane's artwork, then you go to Will Torres. So this is a really cool Venom sketch done by Will Torres. Uh, but it's also really cool because this book is also signed by Todd McFarlane. So yet again, a very unique book in my comic book collection. Absolutely love this book. All right, up next we have a Swamp Thing number one, CGC graded at a 9.4 with off-white to white pages. In my opinion, I feel like that this book is a little more important than House of Secrets number 92. I know that is the first appearance of Swamp Thing, but this is where Swamp Thing's story begins. And that's why I think this book is so much more important than House of Secrets number 92. So this is the first appearance of Alec Holland, Linda Holland, and Matt Cable. All right, here is another fantastic cover done by one of my favorite artists. This is an Amazing Spider-Man number 346. This is a classic Eric Larson cover. Obviously I love it because Venom. If I were to ever meet Eric Larson in person, this would be yet another book I would have signed and slabbed in a heartbeat. All right, here's a Batman number 296 and this is just a really cool Scarecrow cover for me. All right, another favorite artist of mine is Jim Lee. This is a X-Men number one, and this is my favorite Jim Lee cover of all time, featuring my favorite X-Men villain, Magneto. I've had an opportunity in the past to send in books to get signed by Jim Lee. Uh, I didn't because of lack of funds, of course, but if another opportunity came around, I would definitely get this book signed and slabbed. All right, here we have a Batman number 422, which is just a really cool cover. I really love all the detail that's shown in this cover. And this is also a really good conclusion to one of my favorite Batman stories. All right, up next we have an Uncanny X-Men number 140. This is a classic John Byrne cover in art. This is written by Chris Claremont. I love Chris Claremont and John Byrne together on the X-Men title. It's definitely my favorite run of X-Men. And this book is just absolutely epic. Again, I love action in my books. Uh, there is a great brawl between the X-Men and the Wendigo. And if you do not have this book in your collection, I highly suggest that you get it. All right, here we have a Web of Spider-Man number 118, which is the first appearance of Ben Riley as the Scarlet Spider, which is one of my favorite Spider-Man suits of all time. All right, up next we have a Detective Comics number 400, which is the first appearance of Man Bat. This cover is done by Neil Adams and interior is done by Neil Adams as well. And this is a great first appearance. I recently just read this book. This was a great read. And also, Man Bat is one of my favorite, I wanna call him so much of a villain. I would call him more of a nuisance of Gotham because, you know, Batman takes him out fairly easily, but uh, I just think he's a really cool creation. Another one of my favorite slabs in the collection is this Amazing Spider-Man number 316. This features the first cover appearance of Venom, which is why I love it. And of course, yet again, this is another Todd McFarlane cover. All right, up next we have a Batman number 234, which is the first Silver Age appearance of Two-Face, who is also another one of my favorite Batman villains. All right, here we have a Marvel Zombies number one. This cover is done by author Saidam, or Soidam, Saidam. Soydam. I'm really not sure how to pronounce his last name, but you get the idea. Uh, Marvel Zombies is very important to me because this was the comic book series that got me back to collecting comic books and reading comic books back in high school. This book is also very important to me because it is signed by the artist as well. All right, up next we have a Swamp Thing number nine, which is also another classic cover done by Bernie Wrightson. And I have to say, this is my favorite Swamp Thing cover out of the one through 10 run. This book is CGC graded at a 9.6 with off-white to white pages. All right, up next we have another one of my favorite slabs in my collection. This is a Wolverine number one, CGC graded at a 9.8 and it is signed by Frank Miller. And of course, this book deserves a Frank Miller signature because this is my all-time favorite Frank Miller cover. 
All right, sadly, this is going to be the last Batman Neil Adams cover I'm going to be showing in this video. This is a Batman number 221. I just really like how Neil Adams has Batman drawn on this cover. It's kind of like a, a trope of Neil Adams to always have Batman perched on something. But this is also a really cool story in this book as well. All right, up next we have an Amazing Spider-Man number 252, which is the very first appearance of Spider-Man in my favorite costume, which is the symbiote suit, of course. This book is also very very important to me and to have in my collection. This book is CGC graded at a 9.6 with white pages. All right, here we are with the very last Batman DC book in the video of my 50 top favorite comic books in my comic book collection. This is the Dark Knight Returns number two. This is definitely my second favorite cover done by Frank Miller and this book is also signed by Frank Miller as you can see here. This book is graded at a 9.0 with white pages. All right, up next we have an Amazing Spider-Man number 258. This is just a classic cover. And this issue is very important because we find out that the black suit is in fact a symbiote. All right, here we have a Venom Lethal Protector number one, CGC graded at a 9.8 with white pages, signed by Mark Bagley. This is another fantastic cover in the Lethal Protector series. All right, here we have an Amazing Spider-Man number 361, which bears the first appearance of my second favorite symbiote, Carnage. This book is CGC graded at a 9.8 with white pages. All right, here we have a Web of Spider-Man number one. This book is important to me because in this issue, Spider-Man gets rid of his symbiote costume, which then later goes on Eddie Brock, who becomes Venom. Here we have a Web of Spider-Man number 32. This book is CGC graded at a 9.6 with white pages, and this cover is done by Mike Zek. All right, the very last book I'm gonna be showing you guys is my New Mutants number 98, which is the first appearance of Deadpool. This book is CGC graded at a 9.8 with white pages. All right, guys, that was a lot of work. I definitely want to thank you guys for sticking around through the entirety of this video. Don't forget to click that like button. And if you're new here to the channel, don't forget to also subscribe. Guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.